Mark here with Mark's Max Muscle. Today we're going to be discussing this man, Robbie Robinson. Standing 5 foot 7, weighing 200 pounds, competition weight 215 off season. He is an American bodybuilder. Robbie was born in Georgia and raised in Florida. While attending university at Florida A&M, Robbie noticed his body responding quite rapidly to the weight training, as he trained for sports such as football and track. Realizing his potential to be great in bodybuilding, it inspired Robbie to enter his very first bodybuilding competition. With some success, Robbie went on to more than 300 amateur shows. It wasn't until 1975 that Robbie decided to turn pro. And in 1975, Robbie took home the Mr. America and the Mr. World title. With momentum like that, he was poised to take home the Mr. Universe competition in 1975. And enter he did. That year, Robbie won his weight class. And in the finals, went head-to-head -head with Ken Waller. Now in my eyes, there is just no competition. Robbie is head and shoulders above Ken Waller. But lo and behold, the judges voted for Ken. As we know, politics plays a great part in bodybuilding. But this being one of the most biased pitchers that you will ever see, you will see a direct head-to-head -head comparison with Robbie Robinson and Ken Waller. And as you can plainly see, Robbie Robinson blows Ken Waller out of the water. I find it hard to believe that Waller placed ahead of Robbie. It is definitely worth mentioning that I picked a quite flattering picture of Robbie and not so much of Kent Waller. Not being much of a fan of Waller and a huge fan of Robinson. But in 1976, Robbie captured the overall title of the Mr. Universe. With the second most prestigious title underneath his belt, Robbie was poised to enter the Mr. Olympia competition. And in 1977, he did just that. Competition was stiff that year, featuring Frank Zane, the number one competitor. And that year, Robinson looked great, but Frank Zane won with aesthetics and great presentation. In my eyes, part by part, Robbie Robinson is head and shoulders above Frank Zane. But Frank Zane has great presentation and in the 70s it seemed to be leaning towards more aesthetics than the musculature of the bodybuilders. But in this picture you can plainly see Robinson has the edge in the lower body whereas Frank may be more dialed in and more conditioned. In 1978, Robbie returned to the Olympia stage. Ready to win, he was disappointed once again, placing second to Frank Zane. Zane capturing his second Sandow title. Robinson, I'm sure, was discouraged, but poised to enter the 1979 Olympia competition and perhaps win. But much to his chagrin, he placed third, being his lowest placing at the Olympia stage. Robbie decided to not re-enter in the Olympia until 1984. During his time off, from the IFBB Mr. Olympia stage, competition grew and grew and grew. 
In those years, the Olympia featured such champions as Chris Dickerson, Samir Benu, and also, a few years prior, a returning Arnold Schwarzenegger and Franco Colombo, who were definitely not in the best condition. In my mind and in my eyes, these were the years that Robbie Robinson should have reigned as Olympia champion. But it was not meant to be. In 1984, Robbie made his return to the Olympia. And highly disappointing to me and to Robbie, he placed 17th position. Unbelievable for such a top-tier athlete to place so low in his choosing sport. It was very difficult, Mr. Olympia, for me to watch. Three years later, in the 1987 Mr. Olympia, Robbie came in dialed and placed fifth. This was remarkable, considering 17th position was three positions down from being dead last. And three years later, Robbie aged and got way more improved and placed fifth, earning him six grand. Not a bad payday. Also, he captured a victory over Al Beckles, Barry DeMea, and Bertel Fox. 1988, he plummeted back down to 17th position. Disappointed, but not daunted, he returned in 1991 for his last ever Mr. Olympia competition. That year, Robbie looked great. In fact, he had actually improved since the mid-80s. But as we know, in 91, competition was stiffer than ever at the Olympia stage. But this shot of the very Olympia that I spoke of, he looks great. Dialed in, waist looks tiny, arms huge. But as I said, competition was stiffer than ever. So in 91, Robbie had his last ever Mr. Olympia open appearance. Until 1994, Joe Weider introduced the over 40 years of age Mr. Olympia Masters competition, which Robbie in fact entered and won, placing first over Lou Ferrigno. This was Robbie Robbins' redemption. He took home a Sandow Trophy. The following years, in 97, he won and captured the over-50 Masters title. A few years later, in the year 2000, he won again. In 2001, Robbie finally retired from competitive bodybuilding. But Robbie never truly retired from bodybuilding altogether, as he does exhibition posing and personal training. Robbie has countless videos on YouTube, which I definitely recommend. I mean, look at him in this picture here. He is probably in his 60s. Look at the hamstrings. Sliced and diced. Back, full, biceps, huge. Remarkable. If you get a chance to view his YouTubes, it'll probably inspire you, as it did me. Just listening to him, have a good old time on YouTube with Rick Dreisen, working out, just talking about the good old days. Just makes me want to get up and go work out right now. I will be making many more videos on Robbie in the future, as there is plenty to talk about. But for now, I would like to thank him for being such a big inspiration to bodybuilders everywhere. He is Robbie Robinson, he is the Black Prince, and he is my favorite bodybuilder. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. This is Mark's Max Muscle. I'm out.